The Senate on Tuesday received a request from President Muhammad Buhari for approval to pay Kogi State Government 10.069 billion naira, a refund of money spent by the state on behalf of the federal government. Now, the requested amount is for the payment of inherited local debts and contractual obligations of the federal government to the state for projects executed on behalf of the federal government. Uh, still with us in the studio is Evans Ufeli, legal practitioner. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you. And joining us for the first time this evening is Nobel Obasi, legal practitioner as well. Pleasure to have you uh, here with us. Basically, the president made a request. It is a valid debt owed to Kogi State. But now there seems to be politics uh, um, in it. The PDP has come out. That's the reason. Because some of some of the arguments they are presenting, some people feel that it deserves some sort of conversation to see where this money is going to end up. They are saying that loads of people are being owed in Kogi State. Should this money be better expended to offsetting salaries and pensions, while the federal government is just saying we owe you money and we are going to pay? Your thoughts. Let me start with you. Well, uh, I think that um, the way this has been presented, uh, it's been presented in a way to insult the intelligence of Nigerians. Uh, first of all, let's come, let's come with it. The 2019 um, budgets, is this money appropriated there? That is even the starting point, okay, that the state executed some projects for the federal government and there must be a refund. Uh, this fund we are talking about now that is before the National Assembly for approval, was it appropriated? That is one. Two, what exactly is the project that was executed by the Kogi state government? You see, you can't just come and say, uh, National Assembly, pay, approve this money to pay these people this. But the, the conversation we, we is must... that they are the only ones being owed. This money has been paid to other states, about 26 states, 25 have been paid. Only Kogi is left. No, you are talking about the Paris Fund. The Paris no, Fund I'm talking is about different. the loan. It, it, I mean, it, this, uh, sorry, the, re the rehabilitation money, this amount that we're talking about now, the government says 26 states, I mean, 25 states have been paid. Only Kogi is outstanding. 25 states have been paid yes. for projects on the Executed on by, behalf of on, the federal on behalf government. Of the president. Yes. Uh, what exactly are the projects? That is what we do. No, because you can't you can't make such kind of assertion. Yeah, you, you are you are talking about fund from the federation account, and then funds cannot be approved from the federation account where the projects are invisible, where the projects are unverifiable. We have to even look at. The contract, the procurement process, the Bureau of Public Procurement where the contracts went through, and the certificate of no objection that was obtained from that uh, agency, and then the, the contract itself, the project itself, the completion level, whether it meets standards, and then the contractors. Here you just have not, nobody, nothing, no project, and you are asking that they dish money because they paid uh, this state, that state, that state. It, it's it, it, it's not making course. sense at all. It's not making sense at all. Maybe it's who you. Uh -huh. Let's hear your thoughts. So do you agree with him or you have a completely different opinion on this subject? Okay, so uh, I, I, will, I will adopt some of his arguments, you know, in terms of uh, the, the um, legality of the refund. Okay, so he, he, he talked about... Um, whether it followed due process in, you know, in, in, in whether um, perhaps the president followed due process in getting the fund, and, uh, you know, whether there are, are real contractors who executed any project and whether they are projects. Um, well, I wouldn't be in the best position to answer th those questions because uh, that's left for the Kogi state government and perhaps the federal government. However, I would take it from the standpoint of... Um, the intention or perhaps the priority of the fund. So let's say the president has gone to the National Assembly to seek for approval for this fund. And before he sought for the approval, there must be uh, a need for that approval. There must be like an ob ob object, 
or the use for the, for the refund. So the president is saying that the refund is to pay uh, local contractors, that they intend to issue perhaps a promissory note on behalf of uh, Kogi State to maybe perhaps issue bonds and use the uh, proceeds to uh, pay uh, contractors. Well, 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 well it's, it's at, from our point of view, I don't think what the president, you know, what he's doing about trying to uh, refund payment to um, Kogi State, I don't think it's really a bad thing if it follows the due process. Then on the second leg, again, the intention or the use of that fund. So the fund needs to be put into adequate use if and by every means it's, it's gotten through you know, the usual regular process. For example, I mean, Kogi State uh, as widely, uh, as widely um, read in papers, uh, there's always a, a, a particular you know, a peculiar news coming out from Kogi State about what has been you know, old salaries for 30 months, 36 months. I mean, it's absurd. It's appalling. Well, that but, but again, the, the, the monies came from somewhere. It has to be replaced. We'll get to that in a bit. But something okay. you, both of you said actually um, triggered my thought, and that is the fact that um, you're not comfortable with the, the amount and the way it is going. But would it be illegal? I mean, would the presidency be bringing this to the fore, going to the National Assembly to seek approval if there was something fishy about it? Well, it's possible for the presidency to take up an issue of this nature with the authority it has. Uh, it is not, um, we cannot pretend to believe that the powers of the presidency cannot be abused economically in this regard. Because what I see here is an abuse uh, is, uh, is an Im immeasurable distortion of the, the proper procedure of how things should be done. Because when you look at this governor that we're talking about, it's a governor that has old salary for 36 months. This is a governor that have not been able to carry out any major state project. And now we're seeing that the, 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 the state has executed project for the federal government. And there is nowhere in the books where the projects are mentioned, their locations, what they are meant for. I mean, when Akwabio took on projects in Akwabio State, we saw the prison he built. We saw the roads. They were verifiable. We saw the projects. And when he applied to the federal government, we followed up. We saw how it went. And you go to other states. This one, there is nothing. Even the state is not self-sufficient. If, they, if they're asking for a bailout fund, that is OK. Government, the federal government does that once in a while. Give them some money. Let them be able to pay salary, do this and that. But you don't begin to make this kind of because you have to run election, because you have to do. They, the, they've actually the come out. The state government, I mean, the true yeah, rep, has yeah. come out to say that um, it is not for election purposes. As who, being who told them that it's for election? Who told them that it's for election? Part of the accusations from the PDP, you, you said something about the monies um, being used, uh, the suggestion, and that's what the PDP is suggesting yes. at this point, that they should be used, the money should be used to pay the workers and pensioners who haven't been paid yes. all this while. But yes. just before I, I diverted the question, I was asking you that this money was used for something. Contractors, the, and the government, the state government has come up to say contractors are being owed. Yeah. Contractors need to be paid. So it will not be wise to take the monies that belong to someone else to use for something else. What's your reaction to that? Okay, uh, so, uh, I mean, if you, if, you, if you do any job, it's, it's right that you paid for the job you've done. But if there are no verifiable jobs, how do you create a job from nowhere and pay for the job? and pay for that job. Mm. Okay, so people of Kogi State are saying, say the opposition, they are saying that they cannot find any infrastructures. Infrastructures are, are things that are not hidden. Say the roads, the perhaps uh, schools, uh, perhaps uh, maybe housing. Those things are, they are, they are physical things we see. They are things that are verifiable. So average Kogi person would tell you that he's not seeing anything happening in the state. So that is actually the bone of contention. So, so, what, so, can this saying, so be, what are you funding? Can, can this money be monitored? Yeah, because now that 
whether we like it or not, the matter is at the National Assembly. Yes. And there's every likelihood that the funds might be released. It to will not be released. They will set up a committee to investigate the project. Okay. It cannot be released. Because it is not Kogi House of Assembly. We are talking okay. about the National Assembly. They will set up a committee to investigate the project, to verify the project, to check what I went through due process. Because the PNID we are talking about today, they were not going to pay. What happened? But they, they are saying that they this go is through, monies that has go been due to them for a long Excuse time. Me. And they've even accused the senator, uh, mm -hmm. um, Denobelai, where, where of where are the projects? against it. Yes. No, where are the projects? Because if you have the projects, you understand. I mean, I don't have a problem with... I so mean, what do you is, expect is, uh, from this committee? Craig? I expect that the committee will go and look at the projects graphically. Uh, what is on ground? The cost of what is on ground vis-a-vis -vis the Bureau of Public Procurement. But what if uh, no committee is uh, set up? No, there must be a committee that will set up because it's, it's uh, contentious. Okay. It's a contentious, yeah, it's contentious. People are raising, people are joining issues. It's contentious already. So they, they, there must be a committee that will look into it. They, they can't just approve that. You can't just approve that because even the Senate President said does not have such power. You, you put it to vote. Okay, I guess that's where we'll, just your final thoughts quickly in 30 seconds. So okay, so I, so like I, I, like I, I, I said earlier on, I'll still emphasize on the intention of the, of, of the um, fund. So what would the fund be used for? Okay, if you, if you said you want, to use, you want to use it to pay for uh, contractors who have done uh, their jobs, who have constructed roads, where are the roads? These are things we need to see. If there are roads, then it's fine, you pay them. But if there are no roads and you get the money, that, that, I mean, use it to pay your workers. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thank you very much. I appreciate your thoughts. And thank you for staying with us thus far. We're not done yet. We'll go on a short break for our plus package. And when we return, I'll give you my take. Do stay with us. Amnesty International has called on the Nigerian government to immediately end violation and abuse on the rights of freedom of expression on members of the press. The International Human Rights Watchdog, while releasing its report titled Endangered Voices in Abuja, said that in 2019 alone, about 19 journalists and bloggers have been arrested and incarcerated for only doing their jobs and expressing dissenting views about the government. Amnesty International is calling on the federal government to create an atmosphere where pressmen can do their jobs freely without any fear of reprisals as stipulated in the Nigerian constitution. Freedom of expression is a human right. Various international treaties, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, have all stated that freedom of expression is a human right, and countries have obligations in the spirit of international cooperation and global progress to enforce them. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, provides in Section 39.1 that every person shall be entitled to freedom of expression, including freedom to hold opinions and to receive and impart ideas and information without interference. However, the testimonies and evidence Amnesty International has documented and which will be presented to you today show that the balance required by states to ensure that the freedom of expression is respected in the context of its laws is tilting dangerously away from the very essence and character of the rights itself. Laws such as the Terrorism Prevention Act, as amended, and the Cyber Crime Act Prohibition Pre Prevention Act have been applied by Nigerian authorities and their agents in a manner that clamps down on the press and restricts freedom of expression. Individual journalists, media activists, and bloggers have become a target of laws meant to protect our collective safety and security. In 2019 alone, at least 19 journalists and bloggers have been detained for sharing information or for merely just doing their job. Media houses are also targeted. I might not know a lot or have the details like the Director of Projects Coordinating Unit at the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Maimuna Habib.
But from what I see around me, I am completely certain that we do not have enough food in this country. The government is doing something towards addressing the situation. That much I can acknowledge, but we are far from okay. We have to acknowledge this. Only then can we work even more assiduously towards reducing starvation and hunger in this country. Anything else, and we will be deluding ourselves. Many thanks for your attention tonight as always. Please join us again at 7pm tomorrow for more conversations about the Nigerian state. Bye for now.